finish it. I don't get too much closer than that. <laughs> Georgie! Okay, from behind us. Thanks for clicking on this hunt. You're really going to enjoy it. This is an awesome hunt. Before we get to it, I've got a new podcast called The North American Waterfowler. I'm going to be showing you a segment of this at the end of the video, so be ready for that. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Enjoy the hunt. That's where we were gonna set up and they're just dumping it over there, oh my gosh. Freaking annoying is that. They're just not landing on us. No. They're landing on us, just. Well, we made a super quick move because everything wants to, everything wanted to land over here, everything. So I did shoot one, Mallard Drake, but we were over there, they just didn't want it. Everything wanted here. So we just decided to make a quick move and set up here. That's time to get going. I just don't feel like I can film because I just, yeah. I'm just trying so hard to be hidden to hold still. Praise the Lord. He <laughs> <laughs> still came from behind us. Sit. Sit. Here. Here. Hand. Good dog. Well, that one finished. Gosh, I want to film this so bad, but it's like I'm just so afraid to move. Yeah, we can't do much moving. Come on, baby. Dad, finish him off. The dog's gonna get him, ain't they? Should we send, we want to send both of them or candy or what? That was sweet. Yeah, that was awesome. All right, candy versus the goose. Yeah, I see it. It's, she's got it. She's swimming towards it. I hope she sees it. She's doing good. She's heading in the right direction. It's sitting right there in the weeds. She just keeps going, she'll see it. It should be, yeah. Well, I shooting it on the water. Good job, me? Candy. Good job, Candy. Nice. Is that Fumbles? No. Was that Fumbles? Kennel up. Is that No. Candy. Kennel up. Kennel up. Oh, that's, I thought it was a Susie. I guess it wasn't. Good deal.
Did, you, did anyone get one? No? Yeah, I shot the hen. What happened? Oh, I, I just didn't quite get on him. I shot behind him. He's turning. Dead eye strikes again. <laughs> I don't. I. I. I've never. I'm speechless. <laughs> this is not my life experience. <laughs> my life experience is not pulling the trigger and just birds folding every single time. <laughs> but I'm going through a streak where that's what's happening yeah, right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> six for my last six. Dang, dude. I know. I'm just folding. This him. is impressive. Hand. That's my 100th duck. Hey, congrats, man. That was my 100th duck of the season. That's only the second time that I've been, been able to get to 100 in a season. My all-time record is 101, so I'm, if I can get my limit with a bonus duck today, or no, if I get my mallard limit, then I've got it done. Yeah. So if I just get my mallard limit, then I can have my all-time best top record. I hope you're enjoying this hunt. I want to tell you really quickly about Fountain TRT. It's an organization where you can get your testosterone checked without ever leaving your home. Did you know that almost half of all men, especially over 40, have low testosterone and they don't even know it? Things like lack of energy, excess fat, bedroom issues are symptoms of low testosterone. The easiest way to check if you have low T is to get a lab test from a specialist. But Fountain TRT makes it super easy and allows you to get a full lab lab test plus a video call with a doctor for just $25. Usually guys this would cost you between $50 to $100, but subscribers can take advantage of this offer with a special link that I you see right here and that I will also put in the description for you to check this out. If you're interested in treatment, they can prescribe TRT to ship to your door very quickly. So go check that out. Now let's get back to the hunt. All right, well, I don't know how many birds we got. Aiden's, I think Aiden's got three, I've got four, Fumbles has two. Aiden got himself a hen. I'm a hen slayer today. I hen slayer. Uh, Candy's turn. <laughs> hey, that's, that's my limit. An Elliott limit, and that's a new record for you, isn't it? Yep. 102. 103. 103. 102, yeah, 102. Good job, man, congratulations. That was nice. <laughs> that was the best shot of the day right yeah, there. that was beautiful. So I've got my mallard limit. Aiden needs two ducks. Fumbles yep. needs three. We may, I think we're gonna get this done. I think we can get it done too, yeah. But good. these guys are running out of shells. I'm having to borrow some. Both of these guys are borrowing shells from me. Hey look. <laughs> you just killed that duck at like eight yards. Yeah. I haven't missed any ducks at eight yards. True. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't shot any. <laughs> yeah, I'm the ammo supply store at this time yeah. at this point. Fumbles only brought in twelve. <laughs> Cause he's trying to cut weight, which just makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Georgie's turn. Yep. Georgie! I don't know who killed that one, but it's dead, and that's what counts. You, do you really think that? Yeah, I really do. Good girl, Jay! I was like, it's dead, and that's what counts. Good job, guys. 
Good girl, G. Yep. Yep. Well, a couple things. Number one, thanks to Tim Cochran, we remembered it's Fumble's birthday. Where you at? <laughs> there he is. There's the birthday boy. Yep. Tim Cochran was supposed to come with us on this trip, and he had an unfortunate thing happen to his family. A death, so he couldn't come. And it's Fumble's birthday today, and we forgot, and we saw that Tim Cochran wished him a happy birthday. <laughs> nice <laughs> job there, Tim. Yeah, saved us, because, oh, I, today's his birthday, and mom's, my mom's been reminding me about it for, like, the last three days. <laughs> you don't forget what you're doing. I know. <laughs> it's a double seven. 77. Wow. Dude, you are killing it, Carl, to be out here at 70. I feel like I'm killing it. <laughs> you're doing awesome. Yeah, you're doing that's, great. That's so cool. Here's the birthday boy. Just killed his birthday duck. Mom said to me, Mom said to me, well, you need to make sure you do something special for him on his birthday. I said, we're duck hunting on his birthday. That's enough. <laughs> That's not special. That's not special. You What's, tried to kill me yesterday. <laughs> What's better than duck hunting on your birthday? Uh, on a day like this, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> and we're three away from our limit, so. We're doing pretty good from our mallard limit. Now, if you're asking me about yesterday, it'll be a different. Yeah, yesterday was miserable. My goal is to get really close shots with this camera. Like, but I'll tell you, these mallards are so wary. When you're down in these A-frames, it's really, really hard to film. I mean, I get to the point where I just want to make sure that we're hidden and shooting them. Cause it's a hard, hard thing to get that camera and get it on them and zoom in. It's not easy at all. Not easy at all, so I'll get as good a shot as I can, but we want to make sure we kill him. Oh man, straight panicked. I've been Boop. panicked. Yes. Uh, and I then you go. missed. <laughs> Boop. No! Boom! Finally got him. Grab his gun away from him. <laughs> Click. That was so irritating that clip. You out. folded, that was cool how you folded him up on the last one though. <laughs> Come on, G. Well, there you go. Man, what a fun hunt that was. So I promised you a segment of the North American Waterfowler podcast. I'm going to leave you with this. If this is something you like, go and check it out over at iTunes, Spotify, all your major podcast outlets, the North American Waterfowler. Here we go. When it comes down to it, what are we at our core? We are North American Waterfowlers. Let me try to interpret another one of these. How does YouTube, how has YouTube contributed to perceived animosity amongst duck hunters? I don't think it has. Well, okay. Here's, here's how it has. But I'm going to make that more broad than YouTube. I'm going to say YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So there is a huge divide between a lot of duck hunters that are 55 to 70 and duck hunters that are 20 to 35. There's a great divide between those. And if you go to, if you can just go and see them, if you go to res refuge forums and look at the Kansas um, chat board, it's full of these guys that are like 55 to 75 that are just hate anything about YouTube and hate the younger generations, the mentality. If they, they view the younger generations mentality as all they care about is limits. All they care about is pile picks. All they want to do is post everything on social media. And for some reason it just really, really gets to them. And so there's this, vast divide that's taken place between younger generation 
um, duck hunters and older generation duck hunters. And I think that YouTube has certainly contributed to that, but I think that is the older generation's problem to deal with because, and I've talked about this with Titus. I was on Titus's podcast and we talked about this quite a bit. Why does the old generation care if people want to post pow pictures? Beyond that, why do they care if, let's say, a 22 year old, all he wants is a limit and he's not satisfied unless he shoots a limit? Because a lot of these old guys really harp on that type of all they care about is shooting limits. And I'm like, why do you care that a 22 year old only wants to shoot limits? Why do you care about that? Why does that bother you? If they're not doing something in unethical, who cares? It's their hunt, it's their life. Old man, what do you care that that's all they care about? Well, that's not how it should be done. No, that's not how you think that it should be done. It's, it's not how I think it should be done. But someone, I'm not on the hunt with some kid. I don't know some kid. If he's not happy without a limit, and he wants to post a thousand pile pictures of a limit, how does that affect my day in any way, shape, or form?